All right, so a good friend of mine, Alex Icon, has been doing a lot of vlogs as of late. Um, and something I thought I would dabble with as well. This is, uh, I'm in New York City, just landed in LaGuardia. Um, don't know how to do these vlogs, but I have a car picking me up in a minute, about 25 minutes early. And uh, I have a few interesting people to meet today. So excited about it. I'll do, I'll commit to a vlog for the full day. I'll do one vlog, I'll post it to Facebook and all those channels and see if people resonate with it. If so, I'll continue to do them. But uh, yeah, I'm in, in NYC, a friend of mine flew me down to interview me. Um, I am doing that interview tomorrow, but have some interesting stuff in the pipeline today. So I look forward to sharing the day with you. All right, so I made the cab drop me off down the street, uh, just near my hotel. Like I was getting sick in the car. I can't, I can't sit in cars for a long time unless I'm driving. Um, but I'm gonna go see if my friend Satya Twina and her husband Jeffrey Zorofsky uh, or at her hat factory. Satya is a great friend, they're both great friends. Um, and Satya makes hats for people like Tom Hanks, Kevin Garnett, Oprah. She's been on the cover of Oprah Magazine twice. Um, she's one of my favorite people. And, and Jeffrey uh, is a restaurateur. He was co-owner in a great restaurant called River Park uh, and also co-owner in Witchcraft, which is a chain out of, uh, out of New York. Where I think they're, they're outside of New York now uh, as they have several locations. So I'm gonna swing by, this is a surprise. I don't know if they, They'll, they'll be there or not, so we'll see. A quick uh, fun side note. My wife and I, last time we were in New York together, or one of the times we were in New York together, we came to this, this waffle place. Uh, we're, uh, we're gluten-free, but uh, you know, every once in a while we like to splurge. So apparently I walked past it, but uh, yeah, it should be here, right around here somewhere. I just want, I want to say hi well, to both of you. Oh my goodness, hi. So just left my good friend Satya's hat factory. Uh, was able to see her lovely husband, Jeffrey, who's a, a great friend of mine. He actually just finished a marathon. He did the New York City Marathon two days ago. Um, is not a runner, <laughs> historically, but uh, once a year he really tries to, to do something that pushes him outside of his comfort zone. And this year was uh, the New York Marathon. Next year he's planning to do Kilimanjaro, uh, which is awesome. And just... Uh, very blessed to have friends like them. And uh, if you want to know more about Jeffrey, he's one of my favorite people. He actually did an interview with uh, Joe DeSena, the founder of Spartan Races. And uh, I actually, oddly enough, connected them about a year ago because I know Joe was coming to New York to do interviews and was looking for interesting people to, to interview. So I, I told Joe that Jeffrey was a, a great guy to chat with. And oddly enough, they, they hit it off. And uh, Jeffrey's been to Joe's place in Vermont um, they've become really close, close friends and Jeffrey was telling me that uh, while he was running the New York Marathon he had, uh, he had Joe in the back of his head uh, to some degree. He was a huge inspiration for that run and a huge help. So, um, so yeah, I'm on my way now to the meatpacking district. I was told to try to find the High Line which is supposed to take me right to the meatpacking district and it's supposed to be a beautiful walk. So I don't know if you see those apartments in the back, but a friend of mine, just in case you're not familiar with uh, New York real estate, a friend of mine has, uh, like I probably like, whoops, I'm ruining people's pictures. A friend of mine has like an eight, uh, 800 square foot apartment that he spends $5,000 a month on to rent. And uh, when he told me, I couldn't believe him, but then I spoke to other friends of mine who have places in Manhattan and it's absolutely bananas. Because uh, I mean, for, that's $5,000 American and Canadian funds, that's like, 60, 6,500 and 6,500 Canadian could get you one hell of a compound in any kind of major city uh, in Canada. So just behind me, I think you can see it. See that beautiful kind of curved building? Um, that's IEC. IEC, I think they do about $3.2 billion a year. They're a public traded company. Um, I know the CEO of, of Match.com and all of their online dating properties, his name is Sam Yagen. That division of IEC, they own Vimeo and a bunch of stuff. But on the dating side of things, they own uh, uh, Match.com, obviously, OkCupid, Tinder. Um, and I remember the revenues. When we met them, I think, in 2014. The revenues back then were, I think, $750 million, um, but $225 million in profit. So you got to love that. But uh, 
Sam is an amazing guy. I actually plan to do something with him in New York in the, in the next coming months. Uh, but the building itself, I think, is, is designed by Frank Gehry, I believe. Uh, I, I probably butchered his last name, but very, very, very famous architect. And it's a, it's a beautiful building. So if you ever have an opportunity to see it, uh, it's the IAC building. I, I think it's right off the, the Hudson here. Well, I had to take a quick video of this thing. It's the uh, Polaris Slingshot, one of uh, a good friend of mine ended up having one actually at Mastermind Talks. For some reason, this guy's kid's name is Logan. I call him a kid because he's early 20s. But he gets all these exotic cars from all these amazing companies. Um, and they just loan it to him and he kicks the crap out of them. There was a, he had, in Germany, had this Rolls Royce uh, Corniche, I think. It was like a $350,000 car. He was doing burnouts on an airstrip. Um, he had a Lamborghini LP something recently that was worth I think three hundred thousand dollars or four hundred fifty thousand something bananas but a mastermind talks on last one in Napa you had that little slingshot and at night it looks like the Batmobile um, so John my man hey, I'm gonna make you a star this is my first vlog right. ladies and gentlemen vlog? it is right. Right. we right. almost kissed there that was that was good that I'm gonna was give a, you a hug a kiss oh, please. good to see you brother. good to see you man I do bone broth, so. Oh. so just uh just finished lunch with my good friend John, who's in the men's coaching space. Runs a very uh, great practice, uh, doing one-on-one -on -one stuff, and we were just talking about scalability um, and what that looks like for him as far as you know retreats, different mediums like podcasting, books, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it was a great conversation because uh, I think him and I meet very much eye to eye on the importance of like legacy, and that was actually one of the biggest takeaways. From the conversation was you know why create a create a, the importance of creating a body of work that will live long after you're gone uh on my way right now to go see my friend james altucher uh, james is a eclectic guy that i've known for a few years now wall street journal uh bestseller he supported us for the first mastermind talks event uh him and his wife claudia i just love them both and this is a very much a last minute <laughs> coffee date i believe it's around here from mulberry street in new york Longer walk from Chelsea than I originally thought. All right, so a little lesson learned. Um, I went to, uh, to meet up with James Altucher. He wasn't there. I didn't have his cell phone number. So I waited for about uh, 15 minutes or so and then Ubered out <laughs> towards another meeting. And then he called me because I emailed him my cell phone number when I realized he wasn't there. And uh, um, I ended up turning around. I don't know how much that Uber cost. <laughs> Mr. James, <laughs> good to see you, brother. <laughs> so just got back into my hotel. Actually, just got to my hotel. It's about six o'clock at night. Uh, I landed in uh, New York at a LaGuardia at like noon. So this is the first time I stepped foot in my hotel. Took a quick shower. Was going to take a nap. I'm doing an experience tonight for. 15 just fascinating uh, individuals and uh, 16 actually fascinating individuals and you know even though I do dinners all the time I do I've done experiences before one-off experiences I've hosted a, a mastermind group I've written a book on you know how I do my dinners I've hosted probably over 400 people on mastermind talks over the years I still get nervous hosting uh, these dinners not because I mean I wouldn't say I'm a worrier per se but a good friend of mine, Todd Her Herman, who will oddly enough be at the experience tonight, uh, has a saying that you know entrepreneurs are not uh, we're not negative thinkers. Sorry, sorry, we're negative thinkers, but positive expectors. Um, so we think negatively. We always think worst case scenario, but we expect positive things. And um, thankfully, you know, I haven't had any negative experiences doing these dinners or mastermind talks or anything like that. So uh, I'm getting comfortable with the worry, but it always kind of settles in around around this time. So I was gonna take a nap, uh, but I was afraid I was gonna sleep through uh, <laughs> sleep through the dinner and the experience because it actually happened when I was in Vegas uh, probably two years ago. I was in town for an event and uh, landed around noon. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna buy some show tickets for tonight, bought some show tickets, decided to take a nap at 2 p.m., woke up at 4.30 and I was like, great, you know, gonna go grab dinner, I'm gonna go see the show. Uh, went down to the casino, realized it was empty. Sorry, it was, my arms are getting a little tired. Uh, re realized it was empty 
and uh, found out it was basically 4.30 in the morning, so I slept through the shows and stuff like that. Tonight, I have a lot riding on tonight, so I'm not going to uh, not going to take a nap. I'm going to power through it. All right, walking back to the meatpacking district for what feels like the 10th time today. <laughs> now, I'm probably like two minutes from the venue. I'm actually having a little bit of a hard time finding it, but uh, incredibly excited, but again, nervous because this is a venue I've never used before. This is an experience we've never done before. And this is by far one of the highest caliber groups I've ever hosted. So uh, I don't take that lightly. So very excited, but very nervous at the same time. So uh, look forward to showing you exactly what we'll be doing in a minute. All right, so I just arrived. Uh, what we ended up doing, actually, I think I'll tell you now, just give you a little bit of context. So we rented out a bar um, that is closed right now. It's called, it's actually a bar slash nightclub called Hilo. And uh, all 15 of our experienced participants tonight are going to be mixing drinks and we're going to have a competition this is all going to be catered as well um it's going to be a really cool experience because i mean dinners you build great relationships over over dinners it's one of the oldest you know ways to build uh community and connection uh however unique experiences that puts everybody on level playing field nothing beats it so this is a first time for us really excited um so let me give you a little bit of a, a walkthrough so again i hope this is not a problem a lot of people will think this is closed because everything is pitch black. All right, so just sent a text to everybody, just a quick heads up that I've arrived. Um, and uh, I'll be seeing a few of these guys in a few minutes. Mississippi We've got local raspberries, Hudson Valley apple, okay? Just a whisper of triple sack. We've got lime juice from Eugene's family orchard. Out on Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach. Brought some with you today. Brighton Beach. Now, the tequila was hand squeezed, right? Right from, well, I guess it was hand fermented. <laughs> um, and I the last thing that we had in here is just a dash of sugar and a lot Oh, last ingredient as well. And team um, number? We are, uh, uh, I don't know what team, team number five, we team submit five? to you the Mississippi Muffin Top. Okay. So in um, fifth place, we have the Mississippi Muffin Top. Oh, <laughs> it was, oh you sold it too hard! <laughs> and the winner by half a point is the Blackberry. Oh! <laughs> so yeah, it was it was it was pretty good. Yeah, I'm into it. Was simple but perfect, um, perfect level. Yeah. <laughs> hey there, everyone. So I want to make a quick recording last night. Uh, unfortunately, my phone died. Uh, when you do a lot of video recording uh, on cell phones, unfortunately, the batteries don't seem to last that long. So, um, uh, just a quick kind of heads up or, or recap at the end of the night, people definitely enjoyed themselves. It worked out really well. Out of respect, I normally never disclose who comes to our dinners or who comes to our experiences. Uh, however, somebody who was part of the group last night just posted it on Facebook, so uh, it's already public. So, I thought I'd share it with you. Um, they wrote, uh, invited to a mystery dinner with Jason Gaynard, ended up at my first mixology course, hashtag gotta love NYC. So, uh, this was the post. I actually, um, that's a picture of the bar. I actually realized I didn't really take many pictures last night, so this is great to have on file. Um, this was posted by Adam Braun, who is somebody who was in my network for quite some time. We have a lot of mutual friends, but we've never crossed paths before. We had a great conversation uh, last night. I'm a huge fan of who he is and what he's built uh, and what he stands for. I mean, he uh, he founded Pencils of Promise. They've built about 320 schools, um, he was telling me last night, and uh, they're just doing absolutely amazing things, and he's a great guy. 
So uh, just sitting here, my interview is in about, I guess, an, an hour. Yeah, an hour and 15 minutes from now, um, sitting with some of the, the questions that they, they sent me. It's one of those things that uh, when people have me for, for an interview or speak on stage, um, because I'm not a big name, I always feel like, and I don't know if the feeling will ever go away or ever subside, but I always feel like they're taking a risk on me. Uh, and because of that, I, I really take every opportunity seriously because I have a deep desire to over deliver um, to make them feel like it was one of the best decisions they've ever made. So uh, this is no exception. So I've been sitting with a lot of these uh, questions for a little bit and not like the answers will be robotic or anything, but it's really, you know, taking in the questions, thinking of who the target audience is, how I can deliver value to them. Um, cause you can't speak to everybody's model of the world. So I think understanding on a deep level who the target audience is, is huge. Um, so excited about this. I think it's probably about an hour long. Apparently they're doing some kind of makeup, which, uh, may take longer uh, than they're anticipating cause I have a lot of work to do. Um, but, uh, but yeah, excited about it and I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted on how it goes. So just on my way to the Bravo studios, um, I'm a little nervous. I'm feeling good. Um, but, uh. I'm a little nervous and I think one of the core reasons for that is because uh, Ramit, who's the guy who's interviewing me, who flew me in for this, um, I, uh, one of the questions they asked was, you know, tell me more about the whole, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. And, um, you know, where I really kind of put myself in a room where people who were smarter than me was uh, four years ago with an event that Tim Ferriss did for best-selling authors, or authors who wanted to become best-selling authors, and it was $10,000 to go for two days. And I never had the intention of being author, but I'm like, at that price point, there's bound to be some interesting people there. And that's where I brush kind of shoulders with guys like Ramit and, and Tim and, and Ryan Holiday and just all these amazing people. And um, so when I was thinking about it, I was like, I remember sitting in that audience four years ago being what I believe, and I'm not trying to be hard on myself, the dumbest person in the room, um, and seeing these guys on stage like Ramit, like Tim, and like Lewis, and they've all become pretty good friends. And in this case, you know, Ramit's flying me into New York to interview me. So uh, we often overestimate what we can accomplish in a day, but underestimate what we can accomplish in a year. And it's uh, sometimes I still have to kind of pinch myself and shake my head at how far I've come. So um, that's some of the reasoning as to why I'm a little nervous, <laughs> but uh, I know it's going to go fantastic. How are you? Good. I'm here for Rami. Perfect. So that was uh, that was a little nerve wracking. Um, it was very. I mean, they had a full set and stuff like that, and it was very different than uh, <laughs> than uh, shooting a webcam video. As far as uh, you're supposed to talk a lot. Oops. You're supposed to speak a lot slower. Um, and uh, that's something I have a hard time doing. And also, um, I like running with things, and um, answers tend to be, or answers they were looking for were a little more kind of quick. Um, so, interesting time. Um, definitely weight off my shoulders. It's one of those things, though, I think, uh, you know, when you do this kind of stuff, you can be a little harder on yourself. Like when I did Mastermind Dinners, the book, uh, and then... I, I did the audiobook version. I never re-listened to it until actually last week, so it's been a full year. And it was actually significantly better than, than I thought it, it was. Uh, or, and um, yeah, so we'll see. I'm looking forward to seeing the, the final product. Really grateful at the opportunity. But that was, that was interesting to be in a setting which was like more traditional interview style um, for TV, where again, very slow pace and all that kind of stuff, which I, I tend to have a, a difficult time with because I, I have a deep desire to deliver as much value as I can in a short period of time so I talk really quick so uh, yeah great time just about to hop on a plane out of LaGuardia uh, to head home really excited to see my wife and, and my daughter it's only been a little more than 24 hours since I was home but I miss them immensely and that's the uh, the constant battle you have when you know you're incredibly passionate about what you do and the people that you serve um, and trying to balance that with the people you care most about which is your family so um, I definitely don't have it all figured out, that's for sure, but I'm, I'm definitely trying. I'm trying. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. For, you know, if, if, please send me any feedback you have. Um, if, uh, if I get a good response, I'll continue to do them, but this has been a, a, 
an odd day in my life. I'm usually not this busy, but this has been, uh, I guess, a day in my life. I hope you enjoyed it.